So two new Amber Lake processors have come out this year, and they launched a few of them late last year. But what the heck are these processors? Let's take a look. Oh, these are the dual cores with hyper-threading that everyone shits on. But, you know, they do only use 7 watts. And that is actually very interesting. Interesting because these perform like some of the weaker desktop quad cores while well, using a tenth the energy and not being as crappy as Atom. And in fact, they've been making processors like these for years. This is the KB Lake ones. This is the Core M series. And this is when they decided, yeah, Atom is a disaster. <laughs> and we need a way to make at least somewhat cheaper, efficient processors. Now, how do they do that? Well, simple. They just scaled down the core architecture. It really is just about the same architecture, but the graphics portion is scaled down a bit, and they cut off the cores. That's pretty much it, though, but it allows them to make this tiny little die size that, while not necessarily as small as Atom, uses the same small amount of energy. And yes, they don't cost, like, you know, a hundred bucks each or 50 bucks each, although I can assure you OEMs are getting these for much lower costs, but at least they're worth using. And that's what I want to talk about. What I want to talk about is this hilarious mistake Intel made that actually AMD didn't make with their low powered processors. AMD was able to, with the Bobcat, Jaguar, Kabini cores, and so on and so forth, make a quad-core architecture that was just barely not worthless while using 5 to 25 watts and being crazy cheap to manufacture. Now, the way AMD did it by actually making a separate architecture to a certain extent, but Intel's answer was to use an old node they can sell for cheap and scale down the architecture to the point that it was completely stripped off to only what you need. But what that led to, and I owned an Atom laptop, was a worthless quad-core. It didn't... F I can tell you what, guys. Those quad-core Atoms, and even dual cores for the time, did not feel like quad or dual cores. They felt like single cores clocked at one gigahertz. They were horrible. <laughs> horrible, horrible. And what Intel learned is, you know... People will pay another $100 for a small laptop if it works. And in fact, you can fit some of these into some pretty cheap laptops. You know, let's let AMD have the ultra low end. Let's make something worth it. And this is a form factor I want to be explored more often. Right now, to be honest, Core M and those dual Core i7s and i5s are pretty long in the tooth. Four threads ain't going to cut it for anything but very basic things much longer, and even basic things, it's starting to feel very slow if you've used a, well, a yeah, two-core, four-thread system. Uh, even on, like, web browsing can be an issue with Chrome. But what's coming out soon is actually Intel has a 15-watt six-core they're trying out, and that should work pretty well on the newest 14-nanometer plus, 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 plus process they have. I'm sure it will throttle a ton. But what I hope happens next, Bo, and, and also, by the way, I know AMD is actually working on a scaled-down version of Zen that should actually blow people away, I think. Probably six to eight cores, a monolithic die, stripped of some of the cache, and like targeting that 10 to 25-watt power usage. Those APUs, a replacement for Kabini that's closer to Zen in performance than Jaguar, that's going to make some awesome budget and even decent gaming laptops. Processors are overpowered for most tasks. And so we know Intel will probably do this with a Core M that has four cores and eight threads soon, a reboot, right, on 10 nanometer. Because that's all 10 nanometer is going to be used for is ultra small dies that are worthless on desktop. What needs to happen is instead of making new versions of throttling 15 watts, take that 15, that 6-core 15-watt Intel's making right now, and instead of, when it comes to 10 nanometer, overclocking the crap out of it, keep it at clock speeds that are reasonable and just keep that 7 to 10-watt power usage. And then put it, please in the same laptops like that small one I've reviewed, the HP Envy 13. Why? Because then it won't throttle. 
if it has a heat sink meant for just barely cooling 15 watts, but then you give it 7 watts, you can double battery life, not throttle, and that's what I think we need to do. I think laptops are small enough, guys. We did it. We have laptops with dedicated cards and processors, quad, full 8-thread processors, that are smaller than MacBook Airs. This fits, there's nothing you would need to fit this in, unless you start working on, like, the back pocket form factor that's, like, this big, which I'm interested in that as well, but please, this is what really needs to be explored, is what we can do when we get these 7-watt processors into laptops that are meant for 15, so the throttling goes away, so that the battery life doubles, and so that we actually get to use these processors for longer than a minute before they turn into Atom performance. That's really all I'm talking about, and also talking about these under-thought-of processors that are out there. There's a lot more, by the way. It's not just Amber Lake, and that this is the future of low power, not a separate, completely separate Atom junk architecture, but a slightly stripped down, really just cut in half architecture because our CPUs are over already overpowered. Don't make a new architecture. Just cut that uh, six, you know, that 3900X in half, make it a tiny monolithic die on the newest node, and it'll be usable. Not much else to say. Hope you enjoyed this video. Just wanted to kind of get an idea out there talking about things most people aren't talking about right now and get a conversation going about form factor and what we should be doing with them now that they're small enough. They don't need to be thinner. They just need to actually cool their stuff well enough. All right, please subscribe to my Patreon. Talk with me on Discord afterwards there. And of course, you know, like it if you liked it, share it if you can. That helps so much. And subscribe to my YouTube channel. All right. Thank you.